Ooh. I guess I never really realized how much I, uh, slouch. I'm on, like, a stool today, and, jeez, it feels so weird to be actually sitting up straight. Holy crap. Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today I would like to talk about the books that I plan on reading for the month of February. So, last month I had kind of a lackluster reading month. Um, I mean, I didn't get to everything that I had set aside to read um, in the month of January because most of the month was spent with me super stressed out from work and everything that all I really wanted to do was binge Great British Bake Off or play a lot of Animal Crossing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the books that I did read were wonderful and you're gonna hear about them whenever I manage to get that wrap-up video out. <laughs> but um, otherwise, yeah, I, I didn't really get through as much. So I think I'm gonna make more manageable goals for myself for my monthly TBRs, I think, um, such as this month. I'm going with five books, so I'll, I'll probably leave it in that kind of numbered range, maybe. At least for a while. See how I do. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into the books. So, first off, um, because February is Black History Month, I have um, some diverse reads uh, that I've been wanting to get to this year, and I thought that this was the perfect time to get through a couple of them. So, first, I would like to finish reading Kindred by Octavia Butler. Uh, this is all about a young black woman named Dana, um, who on her 26th, 26th birthday, um, is suddenly... Uh, and mysteriously starts being transported back in time uh, to the antebellum south and while she is back there it seems she keeps being summoned to um, save the life of um, the white son of a plantation owner and it does seem like there is some type of familial connection to that um, plantation itself and the people on it um, so it's like a sci-fi, but there's also some historical fiction in there as well. Um, I have been trying to get through it. The story itself is interesting, but the writing style hasn't fully sucked me in yet, but I'm hoping that will change in the next few chapters. I've heard that this does get pretty crazy and exciting, so I would love to finish this this month. So next up, something that also is kind of historical as well, um, is Hidden Figures. This is by Margot Lee Shutterly. Uh, this was made into the movie from, what was it, two, three years ago? Um, this is all about the uh, black female mathematicians who worked in uh, NASA and are basically an essential part of why we were able to make it to um, outer space. So. Uh, I personally have never been like a huge space person, but I love history and I love um, the idea of learning about more um, historical things that just aren't taught in school. Like I guess I never really thought much about the uh, mathematicians and people who would have been behind just the rockets safely getting into space with human beings inside of it. Um, you know, we only really covered um, the astronauts themselves who set foot on the moon or were able to get there or who tragically did not quite make it that far. You know, we learned more about that but we didn't really go into like the mathematicians and the scientists who were behind it and the idea that I at least, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that there were any black women who are involved with this. This is like so cool and I'm, I'm very excited to read this. Next up, I would also like to read Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama. This is his um, first, mem first memoir, right? Because he's written a couple of them now. Um, this was his uh, first memoir. This is all about um, his childhood and also tracing um, the origins of him, essentially. His uh, mother and her white family from their small farm in Kansas to um, when they moved to Hawaii, which is where uh, he grew up for quite a while. I know he also lived um, 
in Indonesia for a while, I believe, as well. Um, and then it also covers his uh, father, who grew up in Kenya. And um, what set this story off was his father had suddenly been killed, and he decided to go kind of on this journey to all of the places that made his parents, and so, in a way, also made him. Um, this is supposed to be just a wonderful story. I know he's like a fantastic writer because, I mean, from all the speeches that he gave over the years and every like thing that you could see that he'd written while he was president, I'm just like, I'm super excited to be diving into this as well. So, hey. And then I would also like to have a little bit of a uh, fantasy thrown in there as well. So I have decided to pick up Holopox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is book three in the Nevermore series. I was wondering if I should put this off for a little bit, just because I know it deals with some kind of fantastical pandemic thing sort of happening um, from what is in the description, which, you know, is potentially going to set my anxiety just like off the charts. But I do really want to get it, get to it. I do really want to see what happens. So I'm hoping to also get to this this month as well. And then lastly, um, in my downtime, I would also love to flip through The Essential Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson. Um, I absolutely adore Calvin and Hobbes. I think I have potentially read this collection before at some point when I was younger, but I didn't own it before now. Um, so I'm just, I'm very excited because I love these guys. I, uh, I love like the little illustrated poems that start out the book and I'm just, I'm excited to to have this at the end of stressful days to kind of read through and hopefully make me feel better. So yeah. Anyway, that is everything that I plan on reading in February. I am hoping that potentially if I'm able to fit it in, I will read some other books as well because I had a couple of others that I really, really, really wanted to get to, um, but I just don't know if I will or not. But yeah. We're, we're going to shoot for the manageable goal of five in the hopes that I actually will also be able to pick up more than that. Maybe if I have time, my brain isn't exploding. Hey guys, so this is future Jen. Jen of a few hours afterwards, uh, after my husband had gone to the mailbox to grab um, our mail, obviously. And... Uh, realized that I have two more books actually that I have to squeeze in for um, the month. So I meant not to get any more books until July. Of course I'm on a book buying ban. Um, but then um, on uh, Bookstagram I had end up uh, agreeing to take part in a book club kind of chat for two different books. Um, and I don't actually own either of the books but I wanted to own them. So I had to go, um, grab them. So, uh, these came from, I removed the thing, they came from my, uh, local bookstore. I'm trying to be extra safe right now, so, um, I didn't actually physically go out and buy them. I had them shipped to me. They were very nice. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I have... Um, two books here for these book discussions that um, one's taking place around Valentine's Day and then the other one is taking place around the end of the month. I have to remember which one is which because I have to start reading one of these like right away so I can get through it and make sure I have like my thoughts collected on it because I don't want to sound like an idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, um, I have two extra books. The uh, first one is um, Red, White, and Royal Blue, and this is by Casey McQuiston. I have been wanting to read this ever since I first heard about it on booktube. Um, this is all about um, a boy who is um, the son of the first um, American, like, female president, and then the other is the son of the, 
Is it the Queen of England? The King of England. I don't know. Anyway, he's the Crown Prince, basically. Um, this is all about them and their kind of budding romance, because they're always acting like they're um, kind of uh, potentially frenemies, sort of. But it, it's like a love story. I'm very excited about this, so that's really cool. And then the second book um, that's for the book discussion that I also picked up was Felix Ever After. This is by K. Senate Calendar. This has also been on my radar for a little bit. This is all about Felix who is a transgender teen and um, ends up having uh, problems once someone is secretly uh, sending him really nasty transphobic messages um, through the internet and he decides he's going to seek out some type of revenge on this person and apparently there's some kind of potential love triangle involved in here. I don't know. It sounds really like important uh, story to read and also like it might be a little cute and um, I actually don't think I've ever read a book that is has a main character who is um, transgender at all, so this will be a first for me and also part of like expanding my reading horizons, I guess. Um, I'm very excited to read this as well. Only at seven books. Oh boy, back to the gen of the past. Anyway, that is that. Um, I wish you all success in your monthly TBRs and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye!